couple jabs there, a couple uppercuts, Laker fans, a couple uppercuts right there. See how I kind of get them like this with the jab. I come with the left and then the uppercut. How do they expect it? I can expect it. Uh, don't know what the hell I'm talking about on this uh, Monday edition here. Uh, again, a chance to put up a little bit of content. So I appreciate you guys tuning in, Laker fans. If it's the uh, first time you've been on the channel, welcome to the channel. If you've been on the channel plenty of times, uh, thank you for coming back. Um, Wanted to throw a quick episode on here. I got a few topics that I want to get into. First off, I want to talk about who could be one of the more underrated players that no one is talking about that signed with the Los Angeles Lakers, um, the potential that he has. And I'm talking about Torian Prince. I think there's uh, certainly um, not enough attention going to the type of impact that he, that he can have on the Lakers. So I want to spend a little time on that. Uh, also, still waiting on Christian Wood, um, Mark Stein put something out there recently on his sub stack. I want to talk a little bit about that and how really it sounds like the Lakers are literally just waiting on Christian Wood to determine if there's a chance to get Christian Wood, they're going to wait on that 14th roster spot. Uh, that seems to be the plan there. And then Gilbert Arenas went out of his way to really, really defend Russell Westbrook in his time in Los Angeles. I have some thoughts on that as well. So we'll get into all three of those topics and uh, we'll take it from there. I appreciate you guys being a part of the show. If you're a Laker fan, an NBA fan, try to put up as much content as I can. Ask just one thing. If you don't mind, if you could subscribe to the channel, I uh, would greatly, greatly appreciate it. It helps the channel, supports the channel a lot. I uh, would really appreciate if you can do so. So please subscribe to the channel. Okay, let, let, let's do this. And I think this is a little bit different um, as far as uh, some of the different conversations that we've had. The offseason has had a lot of different topics, and there's been a lot of different players that have signed with the Lakers, a lot of different players that have re-signed with the Lakers. And for me, I feel like something that's been a little bit quiet around Lakers basketball is one of the additions that they had. So I want to, I want to, as best as I can, um, highlight Torian Prince in this episode. So we know what happened in the offseason. There was a lot of attention that went to Austin Reeves, his four years and his $56 million. Rui Hachimura coming back to the Lakers, three years, 51. What is he going to be able to do now getting a full season under his belt with the Lakers? The D'Angelo Russell uh, is he coming back? Is he not coming back? How much money is he going to come back for? Two years, $36, $37 million, somewhere around there. So a lot of attention went to the Lakers re-signing players, rightfully so. Those guys all had key roles for the Lakers last year. Then you had the Gabe Vincent news that came in to replace Dennis Schroeder. So a lot of attention went to Gabe Vincent. He got a three-year deal. Jackson Hayes, there's been a lot of chatter about, but the Jackson Hayes has been a little bit different. He's got a lot of the chatter because um, how the Lakers are going to use him. They also don't have another big other than Anthony Davis. So Jackson Hayes has got a lot of run attention and conversation because of that. Um, you can just kind of go down the list. There's been, again, uh, there have been different players that have got a lot of attention. And one of the guys that I feel like once the Lakers signed in the offseason, instantly I'm like, well, that's an interesting one. First, first this happened. Um, the Timberwolves back, you know, before July 1st decided that they were not going to guarantee Torian Prince. Torian Prince had a contract for $7.4 million. And um, the, it was a team option and they declined that option to bring back Torian Prince. I thought that was interesting. And I didn't think Torian Prince was going to be in play for the Lakers, but um, getting a chance to just kind of watch him the last couple of seasons. And for those who don't know all that much about Torian Prince, he's 29 years old, a three and D type of player, um, predominantly going to play the small forward spot, but a guy that I think his career is about 37% from three, um, a player that you feel like, okay, well, he can be a, a competitive player on a team. You know, actually, here's a good highlight for him. When we play the Minnesota Timberwolves in the playing game, and the Lakers just barely squeaked out, won a game, uh, won a game against the Timberwolves. They had a couple guys injured. They had the dude that punched the wall. I'm drawing a blank on his name right now. Uh, broke his hand, and I think that was a game against New Orleans, something along those lines. So the Lakers had this game against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Torian Prince was great for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now I've seen him in the past. It's not like it's his first year in the league. I think. This year will actually be his ninth year in the NBA. Um, 
he's been around, played a couple years in Minnesota, played a couple years in Brooklyn, was in Atlanta kind of early in his career. And I, I kind of stop, I hesitate on Torrin Prince for a quick second because I don't think there's enough people talking about him. But when he had the opportunity and he was available in the market, you just assumed he was going to end up with a team that uh, had cap space that was going to try to take advantage of him. And the Lakers ended up signing Torian Prince and they got him for cheap. Um, a one-year deal worth four and a half million dollars. And I think for Torian Prince, maybe it's similar to what the Lakers have done in the past where they brought in players like Lonnie Walker. They brought in players like Malik Monk. They brought in players like Dennis Schroeder. These guys were kind of using the Lakers to see if that could help them get a deal somewhere else. Maybe they can make more money. Happened for Monk. It happened for Dennis Schroeder. Um, it's not uncommon for a player to come play for a, a team like the Lakers who gets a ton of exposure and see if they could, you know, obviously do something from there. But I was surprised when the Lakers got Torian Prince. I, I'm a fan of his skill set. I'm a fan of just kind of watching him around the league. And I thought he was a player that, uh, you know, never is going to get t- is, Torian Prince probably not going to go out there and sign a $18 million a year deal. But Torian Prince is a nice role player that if you have him on your team, you feel good about having him come off your bench. Yahoo Sports had a good article about Torian Prince of just some different areas where um, he can improve his game. But first thing that I I would say to this, I think the guy is going to get opportunity on the Lakers. I think a 3 and D player with the type of players like LeBron, Anthony Davis can spread the floor. He likes playing defense. He likes putting his chin right in the middle of the action. He doesn't mind getting physical. Torian Prince is about, I think I mentioned about 37% three-point shooter. He's going to get shots, and he's going to have opportunities with the Lakers. But I I just think that of all the signings that the Lakers made this offseason, I don't think Torian Prince has been talked enough about. I think the attention naturally has gone to other players. It's gone to players that are more higher uh, marquee type of uh, names. But I think it's also gone to players, just the attention's gone to the fact that the Lakers re-signed some guys. Anthony Davis just signed an extension. Um, It's easy to skip over Torian Prince, but I'm excited about it. Uh, I I guess, you know, for him, he says that there's high standards with the Lakers, and because there's high standards with the Lakers, he's ready to come in and do whatever he can, obviously help the team. Uh, But that's that's one player that I, I would keep an eye out for. Yesterday, I did some predictions on the starting lineup and put that to the side. I think I predicted Jackson Hayes will start, D'Lo will start with Austin Reeves, LeBron, and Anthony Davis. But put that to the side for a second. Just as important are the players that come off the bench. Just as important are players, what's Rui going to do if he comes off the bench? How's Gabe Vincent going to fit in if he comes off the bench? I think he'll be fine. Jared Vanderbilt and his role for the Lakers. Torian Prince is one of those players that I think will get plenty of opportunities. And I think there's going to be a lot of nights that we sit back and say, you know, Torian Torian Prince, man, I didn't know that much about this guy. Or I didn't watch this guy on a nightly basis. And I really like his game. And I really like what he brings to the table. So um, shout out and a highlight to Torian Prince for a quick second, because I do think that even though He's been around for, you know, obviously a number of years. Like I said, played with Atlanta, Brooklyn, Cleveland, Minnesota. Um, I think he's a player that can help the Lakers. I think he's the exact kind of player that you want to have on your team where um, the perfect role player where he doesn't need the ball, doesn't need the attention, but but can still go out there and uh, and get some work done. So looking forward to seeing Torian Prince and why not highlight him? We've highlighted every other player on this Lakers roster. Let's give some love to uh, Torian Prince as well. Okay, so I mentioned this. Um, by the way, if you'd like, you can uh, comment below if uh, you agree that one of the more underrated underrated signings that the Lakers have had this season is Torian Prince. Put it on the comments below um, and what you think he's going to be able to bring to the table this year for the, uh, for the late show. Um, yeah, he did. In that playing game against uh, the Timberwolves, Torian Prince was, was phenomenal. Um, he was one player that I think shined for the Minnesota Timberwolves, and we all know how that game went. Lakers just barely squeaked by, but they did beat the Timberwolves in overtime, and then they eventually got on to the first round and took on the Memphis Grizzlies. We knew what happened from there, but Prince was a nice player for them, and I think he's going to be a nice player for the Lakers as well. Averages about 10 points a game or so, somewhere around that with the Minnesota Timberwolves, and that's probably what I would expect him to do with the Lakers uh, this upcoming season. Okay, 
So the other topic that I mentioned, uh, man, how many times have we spent or have we heard Christian Wood's name this offseason? I, I feel like everywhere I turn, I, I see Christian Wood, Christian Wood, Christian Wood, maybe potentially going to be a Laker. Christian Wood, look what he did with the Dallas Mavericks last year. No, it's impossible with Lakers to get Christian Wood because um, – uh, he's going to make more than the minimum. Um, Mark Stein reported this in his Substack. I'm going to read it exactly how he reported. He said, as I reported uh, last month, Dallas remains open to facilitating a sign and trade for Christian Wood. If the Mavericks can acquire a player, they uh, like in the exchange. But neither the Lakers or the Miami Heat are considered potential sign and trade destinations. So. Um, this, again, comes from uh, Mark Stein. He does his uh, sub stack that he does. He's fantastic. He's great. He's always uh, putting up some phenomenal work there. So go check out his work. But in his sub stack, basically, there was at one point that we heard that, hey, would the Lakers maybe be interested in doing a sign and trade for Christian Wood with Jared Vanderbilt? The numbers can work, this and that. Um, it sounds like that's not in the card. So I think what the Lakers are waiting for now is – is there anyone else coming out to potentially does anyone else have interest in Christian Wood that would give him that would give him more than the minimum? Um, Dan Wyke of the LA Times also he put something out. He said the belief is that the team would prefer to get something done sooner than later on its final roster spot. And Christian Wood reportedly remains the team's top choice. So we've heard Christian Wood's name. For 30 straight days. I'm not kidding. I think it's 30 straight days, something along that. But I've done some videos saying, no, I prefer Bismack Biombo. Give me that more traditional big. It sounds like the Lakers definitely prefer the talent of Christian Wood, the upside that Christian Wood can bring. Um, I think probably also something that comes to play in this is the fact that he averaged 16 points a game last year. Um, and he has the ability to create for himself. And who knows if LeBron or Anthony Davis is missing some time, I'm sure the Lakers are trying to think to themselves, do we have another option that we could have there, a scoring threat that can be a true scoring option? So I'm, I'm sure that's part of the thought process, process that's going into it. And I'll go back to it. it. It all comes down to this. The Lakers, if they can get him for the minimum, then that's what they're probably most interested in. Uh, Dan Wyke of the LA Times also mentioned that um, personality issues that comes with uh, Christian Wood, professionalism that comes with Christian Wood, maybe that is some of the reason why um, that he has not signed anywhere yet or he hasn't got more than just the minimum, but uh, the veteran's minimum salary. Um, but keep an eye out on Christian Wood. That's the latest that you know they're saying here. You're not going to get any type of sign and trade, number one. And number two, that Christian Wood still is a, uh, a team's top choice if he is available. So may maybe Christian Wood takes a little bit of approach, like I mentioned with some of those other players that I was talking about, where he could come to the Lakers, kind of show proof to other teams that he can be an asset, he's not going to be a distraction, that if you put him in the right culture with the right leadership, then he could uh, certainly be an asset for a team down the road. And maybe Christian Wood, whatever contract he's trying to get, doesn't get it this summer. He could potentially get it next summer if he signs with the Lakers and kind of proves his value. So I know that's it sounds like that's what the Lakers are hoping for. Now the question is going to come down to is uh, if that's realistic or not and if that's something that actually happens with Christian Wood. So if you got thoughts on uh, Christian Wood, um, and I feel like a lot of Laker fans have definitely, definitely had thoughts on Christian Wood. Um, I feel like I might have been more of the minority of wanting a more traditional big, somebody that's more defensive minded, somebody that's more a rim protector. Uh, but I, I saw a lot of Laker fans out there that just love the raw talent that Christian Wood could bring to the table and how he can fit with LeBron and Anthony Davis and uh, and everybody else on this team. So. Um, if you have your thoughts on uh, Christian Wood, you could feel free to put on the comments uh, below. Last topic that I want to get into, and before I do so, I'm just going to uh, give a quick plug here again, um, put out as much content as I can, things I think you guys will find relevant, just uh, hoping for that you could subscribe to the channel. Um, that part would be very, very helpful. Um, okay, 
the last thing that I want to put out. So Gilbert Arenas, I saw this article a little bit earlier today, and I want to read the quote here, but uh, Gilbert Arenas was um, on his uh, podcast, on, on his own work, his own platform that he does, was talking about Russell Westbrook, and he was talking specifically about Russell Westbrook on the Los Angeles Lakers. Let me read the quote here real quick, and I'll give my thoughts on it. Obviously, uh, I think we all would agree that the Russell Westbrook project in Los Angeles with the Lakers did not work. Looked like it went better with the Clippers. He found uh, opportunities to talk about how he felt like he can be himself with the Clippers. And uh, uh, certainly just it didn't work with the Lakers. There's no other way to put it. Here's the quote Gilbert Arenas had on. Uh, Russell Westbrook and basically talking about how it was unfair the way Russell Westbrook was treated as a Los Angeles Laker. He said the hatred that the Lakers gave Westbrook was unwarranted because he's the only one that was actually playing. If we started the season off and said, all right, LeBron is going to play 30 plus games. AD is going to play 30 plus game, 30 something games. We would have sat there and said, they're going to be Shit was the word that he was using. I was going to say, should I say ish? But you know what? It's YouTube. I can say the word shit. So said that they're going to be uh, uh, that certainly that he's not going to be good. But the fact that they're not winning and Westbrook is the person that y'all, who else you going to put in there? I guess that's what he's saying at the end. Um, I actually don't mind Gilbert Arenas defending Russell Westbrook in this. I think he definitely, Russell Westbrook, no question about it, the finger was pointed at him a ton in his tenure with the Los Angeles Lakers and how much the Lakers failed. A lot of the attention was pointed, well, it's because of Russ, because of Russ, because of Russ. I think there's a couple arguments here. Number one, I would say this, and again, this is Gilbert Arenas who's um, going out of his way to protect Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook did not trade himself to the Lakers. So you cannot blame Russell Westbrook for that. That move clearly, you know, it didn't take very long for everybody to kind of look at the situation and say, all right, well, this isn't working. It's not going to work. And there's, there's nothing anybody can do to probably change this. That was on um, LeBron James. That was on Anthony Davis. That was on Clutch Sports. That was on the front office. And even Russell Westbrook for wanting to trade to – I'm sure he he thought this thing was going to work. All those parties that had some type of internal conversation of, no, we can make this work. We'll be fine. Just put the talent there and we'll figure everything else out. All of them are at fault. Every single one of them. I don't think there's one person to blame. I think the fact that, um, you know, the Lakers didn't potentially go out there and get DeMar DeRozan or didn't keep Alex Caruso along with getting a guy like DeRozan, whatever the case is. Uh, nothing you could do about it now, but if you could have gone back, I'm sure everyone would have either said, no, let's just keep KCP and Kyle Kuzma and figure it out from here. Or no, let's focus on another move and let's not Russell. We let's not let Russell Westbrook be the move that we focus on. Um, I think hypothetically, if, if that move didn't happen, a lot of things would look a lot different. Actually, ESPN did an article on that not too long ago. A lot of things would look a lot different. But it's not one person that's at fault. I think there's a lot of parties at fault. But if I just tell you what Russell Westbrook, how he could have helped himself as a Los Angeles Laker. I mean, I could tell you firsthand, Russ just, I think there was a lot of things he was having a very difficult time buying into. Coming off the bench seemed to be an issue. Seemed to butt heads a little bit with Frank Vogel. Um, seemed to just want to do things his way, and that's it. And I get it. A lot of people would say, well, that's Russell Westbrook. This is what's made him so great. That's what made him such a superstar for so long, an MVP. He kind of has to run his own show. And Russell Westbrook clearly could not adjust with the Lakers. The Lakers could not adjust with Russ. Uh, I thought a lot of times if you just saw Russ's demeanor, his post-game show, I mean, everything just looked like the vibe was just awful. So I'm sure there are ways that Russ could have improved his tenure with the Lakers, and I'm sure there's a lot of other people that wish, hey, why did we think this was going to work? Regardless, um, Gilbert Arenas coming out in defense of Russell Westbrook, I don't have a problem with, but 
Russ also didn't help himself out while he was a Los Angeles Lakers. So I think there was a number of parties to blame there, and I don't think it was just one individual. But ultimately, at the end of the day, that's up to the Lakers front office to, to recognize and notice that, hey, this is not a good deal. This is not going to work. And that didn't happen for the Los Angeles Lakers. So in in uh, just kind of recapping everything uh, that we did in uh, today's show, um, the Russell Westbrook piece uh, with Gilbert Arenas, I got no problem with him defending him, but I think uh, you could also definitely point a finger at Russell Westbrook. Um, Lakers still waiting on Christian Wood and probably won't make a decision on that 14th roster spot until Christian Wood makes a decision, but it sounds like they're still – that's still the Lakers' hope. And then Torian Prince, his potential with the Lakers. We spent a lot of time talking about all these other players. But Torian Prince, I'd like to give him a little bit of love because I think he deserves some attention as well. So, Laker fans, I appreciate you guys being a part of the show. Um, I'll get back with you guys as soon as we get uh, more Laker content. I'll make sure to put it up. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Have a good rest of your Monday, and uh, we'll get back with you guys soon.